everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at how to draw and interpret scatter graphs. So when it comes to scatter graphs, they require two sets of data. And what we are looking for is whether these two sets of data have any relationship or correlation between them. And I am going to look today at a scatter graph that is based on health indicators in different countries and whether one health indicator affects another. So I have on the screen here a table of a list of 10 countries and then their life expectancy. So the average amount of years that person is expected to live for if they are to remain in that country. And then I have the number of doctors per 10,000 people in the population from that country as well. So I always advise that you keep that data close and you're constantly referring to it throughout this process of creating a scatter graph. So if we begin by creating two axes, we need to have an X axis along the bottom and a Y axis up the side to begin our scatter graph. You then need to make a decision about which set of data you are going to have along your X axis and which data you're going to have along your Y axis. Now I am going to choose to put life expectancy along the X axis of my scatter graph. And when I have created a lovely axis label to make it really clear for anyone who looks at this graph about what I'm choosing to put on the X axis, I then can start to decide what numbers I am going to go up in and distribute across that X axis. So in order to see what number I need to go up to, first of all, on my X axis, I need to refer to my data and I need to look at my maximum number that my data is going to go up to. Now, in which case I have a maximum life expectancy here of 83. So I know that my X axis needs to go up to the number 83 at least. Now, when it comes to drawing graphs, you've really got to space out your axis. Don't bunch all the numbers together, otherwise it's gonna make it really hard and difficult to plot your points. So as you can see here, I'm going to decide to go up in fives. So every two squares is going to be worth the value of five, which means every four squares will be the value of 10. And that way, my scatter graph is gonna be nice and spread out and evenly distributed. Then we're going to repeat this step for our y-axis. So we take our second data set, which in this case is doctors per 10,000 of the population, and we put a nice label for the axis on the side so everyone who is looking at the scatter graph later on can clearly see what that data is showing. And then again, we're gonna go back to our data set. We're gonna look for the highest value that we need to go up to. In this case, our highest value for doctors per 10,000 people is 59. So we need to make sure that our y-axis again goes up to 59. Now to make it easy for myself, I'm going to decide to go up in the same values as I did with my x-axis. You do not have to. I could have chosen to go up in 10s or 20s, but again, I want this really nicely laid out and spread out. So I'm going to choose to go up in fives again. So every two squares is worth the value of five. Now, I strongly recommend when we're drawing a scatter graph for you to keep a ruler handy throughout this whole entire process. This will allow your points to be plotted more accurately on your scatter graph and therefore will increase the accuracy of your relationship and correlation you might see at the end. So we're going to start by plotting our first point for Canada. So as we can see in our data table, Canada has a life expectancy of 81 years and it then has 19 doctors per 10,000 of the population. So the first thing I recommend is that you highlight your data set so you can see it really clearly. This way you won't get it confused with any other countries in your table. We're then going to take our ruler and move our ruler down so it's in line with our Y axis for 19 doctors per 10,000 people. So now our ruler is firmly on that 19. I'm gonna work from our bottom axis or our X axis. And I'm gonna find the 81 and I'm gonna mark with my pencil in your case and pen in my case, 
just a line that reaches from my x-axis to my ruler. And when I am in line with my ruler, I'm going to draw a little x. Now you'll also notice that the other line has just disappeared. And this is just to show you where I have drawn that line to guide my pencil up. So I'm in ensuring that I am in line with the 81 life expectancy to ensure I'm plotting that point really accurately. You do not have to draw these lines when you are drawing your scatter graph, but it may help you at first to guide towards your ruler to make sure that you are still in line with your x-axis before you plot your point. Now we're going to repeat the process and mark China on our scatter graph. So I'm going to take the ruler and move it in line to the number of doctors per 10,000 of the population. Then I'm going to work from my x-axis. I'm going to guide a line up to my ruler to ensure I'm still in line with my life expectancy. And when it hits my ruler, I'm going to draw an x. That guided line from the x-axis can then be rubbed out and disappeared and we can move on to Cuba. So now let's repeat the process. So we move our ruler in line with the number of doctors in relation to our y-axis. We guide a line from our x-axis up to in line with our ruler and then we mark our point with an x. So we continue this process all the way throughout. For France, we move our ruler, we guide a line from our x-axis and then when it hits our ruler, we mark it with an x. We repeat the process for Germany, so on and so forth. So what you will notice is as you get more confident with plotting your points, the guidelines from your x-axis to meet your ruler, you may stop drawing altogether just like I am doing for some and then not doing for others. Now when it comes to scatter graphs, you might also find that some points do overlap. That's perfectly fine. Okay, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to read later on potentially if you've got a cluster of points, but it is no problem. So once you then have completed your data and marked all of it on your scatter graph, you can start to think about what we call a correlation. By looking at the pattern of the plotted points, look how close they are to each other. Look at what direction they're moving. Are they moving up your graph towards the top right hand corner, in which case it's a positive correlation? Are they instead working their way down from the top right to the bottom left corner and therefore giving you a negative correlation? And the closer these points are to each other on your scatter graph, the stronger the relationship between your data sets. And what that means is, is that one of your data sets may be influenced by your other data set in a positive or negative way. Now, scatter graphs can have a number of points on. I have plotted 10 points on my scatter graph, which means that the correlation that I might see is not necessarily very reliable because I've only got 10 data sets. If I was to mark every single country on the world in this particular scatter graph and then look at the correlation, my data would be much more reliable. So please take your correlation with a pinch of salt as we haven't marked every single country on this particular scatter graph. And that is something to be mindful about when you're collecting data in geography. So once you think you can see a correlation within your data set, we could indicate this by drawing what we call a line of best fit to show the overall correlation of your points. Now, in this particular example I am using, I am seeing a positive correlation. And I know this because my line goes from the bottom of my graph to the top of my graph. And it's really important that when you plot your line of best fit, you are trying to get an even number of points either side of your line. So because I've marked 10 countries on my scatter graph, I am trying to get five points on one side of my line of best fit and five points on the other. I might have to go through a point to get an even distribution on either side of my line, but really you should try to have an even number of points either side. Now, every scatter graph and any type of graph you ever create always needs to have a nice clear title as well added to it. Now, once you have your title, what you might start to do is then interpret your scatter graph. And what I mean by that 
is suggest reasons why you think that pattern has emerged. So on my screen, I am seeing a positive correlation between life expectancy and the number of doctors. That would lead me to think that there are enough doctors per people in the population to influence life expectancy. And what I mean by that is there are enough doctors to help people if they are sick. It also shows me that these countries, because they have a high life expectancy, may have a good healthcare system. And that then relates to the number of doctors. So these doctors are obviously well trained. They may not necessarily have a lot of doctors to increase the life expectancy, which therefore means their education system is obviously very strong. So when we interpret scatter graphs, once we've found a correlation, whether it is positive or negative, we can start to suggest reasons why we think this might be. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I will see you in my next video.